Hey y'all, it's me Alex. Today I am doing a collab with my friend Mia of Mia's Virtual Vanity. Um, and we are doing an art inspired shop my stash on the painting Elijah in the Wilderness by Frederick Leighton. Leighton? I don't know how to pronounce his last name. This is really exciting because Mia reached out to collaborate with me because this is a biblical based painting and I am just starting my last year of seminary. I'm in my second week of classes. And so I have a little bit of background in Bible. Um, Mia often does these art inspired shop my stashes because she has a lovely insight into paintings and will do makeup looks basically based off of them and all the while she does teach um, kind of what the background of the painting is and what inspired the artist and things of that nature. So I actually don't know that much about that and I also don't know that much about Elijah, at least not until we decided to do this video because obviously I did my research. I'm a bit more of a New Testament scholar specifically in the Synoptic Gospels. Uh, just because that's really where I tend to get my inspiration and focus for my work and my life is usually from the New Testament and the works of Jesus. But I think it's also important for biblical scholars, pastors, Christians to know things about the Old Testament because a lot of times Christians do kind of uh, push that to the side in a very, I would say, anti-Semitic way too because we often think a little too hard about how like, oh, well, Jesus came to overthrow all that, so who cares? But I think we really should care because Jesus is building off of those teachings from the Old Testament and from the Torah that, you know, we need to know where he was getting his stuff from because guess what? It wasn't just from his dad, you know, or mom were parent. You know, it wasn't just from that, but Jesus was Jewish and he legitimately got his ideas from somewhere and teachings from somewhere because that's how he connected with the Jewish people. This specific story about him in the wilderness comes from 1 Kings chapter 19. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more in that as I'm explaining the look that I'm doing. Um, it went surprisingly quickly, uh, my interpretation, but I preach a bit and you know, that's, well, that's what I'm in school to do anyway. So, you know, and I'm also really excited to see Mia's look because she's honestly one of my favorite people here on YouTube. We've become really good friends and I am always really impressed with her videos and her looks and her, I, I really like this series that she does and I'm so happy that she reached out to collaborate with me. So thank you, Mia. And I'm going to just get into this look. Okay, so I pulled a couple of eyeshadow palettes out of my collection that I think would work really well for this look. I am really paying attention to the angel's wings in the painting for my inspiration. And it kind of goes from some like smoky blue tones to some smoky red tones. So since we're talking smoky, I pulled out my CoverGirl True Naked Smoky palette. First, let me tilt this down because I realize I'm very out of frame. Why are y'all blowing leaves out there? There's like two entire leaves. So I'm largely focusing on the angel's wing for the gradient and the colors that I am looking at for this look. So it kind of goes from kind of a smoky grayish blue to like a smoky warm brownie red. So I pulled out two palettes that I think would work really well for this. The first one, since we're talking smoky, is the CoverGirl True Naked Smoky palette. I think I'm going to dip into some of these middle shades here and kind of do that along the top. And then for the red tones kind of at the bottom of the wing, I am really looking into the Menagerie Cosmetics Dragon Child palette and using like this maroon and this red. So as you can tell, I've already done my brows. I do need to prime my eyes. I'm gonna use my NYX HD eyeshadow primer. A lot of these things I didn't need to think too hard about because like I own one eyeshadow primer, one base product, one brow product. Um, so I figured those parts wouldn't be too terribly interesting to y'all. So yeah, I'm just priming my eyes there. So since I'm kind of doing the theological end of this painting, I have to admit going into this, I, I didn't know too much about Elijah, um, just because I'm a bit more of a New Testament synoptic gospels type person, although I have a lot of respect for Old Testament books because obviously that's where we get our history from. So I think I'm going to begin by using this gray here as my crease shade on the top. And so I did have to do a bit more research. I even talked to one of my friends who is a pastor. I talked to her like literally like five minutes ago because I wanted to make sure that my 
interpretations and ideas were kind of like in line with someone else's before I really go into my theological interpretations of everything. Just because I really don't want to be like super off base and um, disrespectful to the Old Testament just because I don't know as much about it as I feel like I should. Like I know the big story is like the creation story and all that. But you know, we all have our strengths and weaknesses and mine lie a little bit more with the uh, Jesus specific aspects of the Bible. But basically, so at this point, this story comes from the book of 1 Kings and the wilderness part is in chapter 19. But for context, Elijah had just defeated the prophets of Baal, who was one of the, I don't want to say this wrong because I think that this scripture is often misinterpreted to use against um, people of other faiths. And I think that's done really, <laughs> that's done a lot of harm and I don't want to participate in that. I'm going to use this shade now on my lid because I don't think that's right. But Baal was basically a god of a different religion and um, Elijah had been called by God to defeat Baal's followers and he did. That was very good. It was obviously a victory <laughs> for him. My interpretation of false prophets is very different I think from what a lot of people might say because to me uh, false prophets aren't necessarily people who like follow other faiths or anything like that because I'm a bit more pluralistic in my religious views. I'm not so arrogant as to say that my way is the only right way. I don't want to get up to heaven and have God be like, uh, you were kind of a jerk back there. My interpretation of false prophets is more um, choosing those who lead you in life. So that can be your teachers, your mentors, and different folks like that, or even getting into the political sphere. There are a lot of false prophets there too um, that we shouldn't necessarily follow that just because people have money or have the capability to be politicians doesn't mean that they should be. Um, I'm going into this blue right here, no, to this kind of grayish blue. When we choose to follow those false prophets, that can often lead towards defeat and stress and agony in our own lives in whatever way those present themselves. This has a lot of fallout, but so did the battle against the prophets of Baal. <laughs> but basically, that's my kind of interpretation of false prophets is we really do have to be careful when we choose those who we are supposed to follow because you can easily be led down the wrong path. Um, so that's not to me an interpretation on anyone's religion or anything like that but rather it's just like are you choosing to follow someone who's a good person are you you know you should probably make sure of that anyway so now we're getting into chapter 19 which is where elijah goes into the wilderness because that is kind of like where he feels called to be after the battle and all of that and I'm gonna get something to wipe off my face real quick. And now that I've wiped that off, I am gonna go in with my base. NYX, bear with me, Tinted Skid Veil. This is literally nothing new. But now Elijah is going into the wilderness, which is what Frederick Layton is depicting in the painting that we're inspired by today. And that took a little bit of interpretation for me to figure out because wilderness is used as a metaphor in the Bible a lot. Um, when people are finding themselves lost and needing to hear the voice of God, they often go out into the wilderness, whether it is their choice or not. The Jewish people that Moses was leading out of Egypt in the book of Exodus, they were in the wilderness for a long time because they were seeking refuge against an oppressive people. Jesus was in the wilderness because he um, was also seeking to hear the voice of his dad essentially and he faced a lot of trial out there and so wilderness is always used as a symbol for trial and struggle and so that kind of got me thinking about like why would Elijah go through the wilderness after he has gotten such a great victory essentially over the prophets of Baal because that should be a good thing right? Like theoretically defeating one's enemies is like pretty great. Most people would see that as a victory and want to go celebrate that with friends. But instead he chose 
to go into the wilderness and that to me is really symbolic I think kind of going along with the lines of choosing the correct leaders for you in your life both on an individual level and systemic level. And now I'm going to go in with Mother Dragon and use that on the outside of my lower lash line. I think that goes pretty well actually with the idea of choosing your own leaders because a lot of times when we choose our own leaders and choose our own paths in life that we feel is the best morally, um, we're not going to be accompanied by that many people. A lot of people will disagree with you on the paths that you choose because a lot of times the right paths are the hardest. Like right now, it would be very easy to just sit back in our chairs and our couches at home and ignore all of the goings on in the world. A lot of people are doing that. But the harder and better thing is to stand up for what's right in whatever way that presents itself. And now I'm going to go in with Flame Tongue here. In that vein, Elijah was lost in the wilderness because he had defeated a bunch of false prophets who were leading people in the wrong direction. And while that is a victory, it is a very, very lonely one. He was just feeling incredibly lost, incredibly alone. I don't know about y'all how many people, you know, lost relationships with people after, you know, a big election or a big political event going on uh, because you didn't feel as though their choices were morally right. And now I'm going to go in with Lucky on my inner corner here. That's kind of my interpretation of it. So then while he is lost in the wilderness, he's kind of having what my pastor friend Rachel, who helped me out, um, she, was have, she said he was having basically a Jonah moment of like, oh god, why am I even here? It would be so much better for everyone if I was dead. I'm gonna use a little bit of the black shade in the CoverGirl palette to uh, like deepen up my outer corner. Besides, we're getting into the dark deep stuff of this portion now, but he is having a Jonah moment where he is like, this world would be better off without me. I should just die. Like, this is not you know, this is such a lonely path that I've chosen, why did I even do this at all? Like, yeah, sure, I had a victory, but like, was it even worth it? That kind of a thing. And it is in that moment, I'm now just going to highlight my brow bone. Speak of the highlight that's about to happen, I'm not even planning this, y'all. But that is when an angel appears to him, uh, being the voice of God, essentially, and reassures him that he is on the right track and he is performing his call. So that is kind of my interpretation of the scripture, essentially. I just need to even out these eyes really quick, because um, I also didn't expect my exegesis to, like, be so short. That's my interpretation of the scripture and my little, uh, sermon about it, you know. I'm now going to do some wing liner since I am basing this look kind of off of the angel's wings. I could have used a little bit more of the cream shadow that kind of goes in the middle, but I don't like myself in light eyeshadow, so I'm not doing that. So I'm just going to do some eyeliner real quick. I'm not going to talk during it or anything like that. Okay, so now that I have done that, I literally own one mascara. I'm going to curl my lashes real quick, and then I'm going to use my ColourPop BFF mascara to finish off the eye portion of this look. So now moving into kind of my inspiration with a painting. As I've said before, I'm largely looking at the angel's wings for this look, but also because I wanted to do something a bit smokier because the angel is coming to him, is coming to Elijah in his moment of desperation and agony and anguish and darkness. So even though a lot of the tones are a little bit lighter, more sepia toned, and they're very blurred together, so I also didn't want to do anything too terribly defined. I wanted to do something a bit obviously pretty smoky, just because I think that would help capture the, essentially the darkness that Elisha's feeling inside. And I also really wanted the inner corner highlight to really pop because it is in that moment of shock and surprise of the angel appearing to Elisha that that is when the spark of light kind of appears back into his life. And like, yeah, it doesn't get necessarily easier afterwards, but as much as we have our God moments and our moments of like epiphany, essentially, um, you know, it's not going to be easy forever just because we have those moments, but it does help with the reassurance that, that like there is a light at the end of this tunnel, even when we're experiencing darkness. I don't know what I did to this hand. 
I need to wash it off. Okay, so I think my hand is like basically stained. So I think that's kind of, I'm just gonna take that L there. <laughs> so now I'm gonna keep the face relatively muted to kind of go with the muted tones of the painting. So I'm just going to contour my face really quickly just because I feel like if I just did bronzer, that would be a little too warm toned for the painting and kind of how it is. I'm not telling you what I'm contouring with because I don't like the brand. Just trying to use it up. Okay, and now I'm just going to use, again, the one bronzer I own, and that is the NYX Matte Bronzer in the shade Medium. And I'm just going to use that on my cheeks very lightly because I know that this bronzer can run a little bit orange, whereas the painting itself is a little bit more sepia toned, so I don't want to bronze up my face too much, but I do feel as though it would help add a little bit of depth that way, you know, my face is not so terribly monochromatic, because while the painting itself is, you know, kind of all in one tone, there is a bit of depth here and there that I do want to emphasize. And I actually want to use the shade Lucky from the Dragon Child palette, which I used on my inner corner. And I'm gonna use that to highlight my face, just because I really do want that to match. I'm not gonna do a super gigantic highlight, um, but just enough for it to give a little bit of shine and kind of, again, represent that sort of light at the end of the tunnel that Elijah is experiencing from the angel of God appearing to him. And then to kind of go with that glow, but not too terribly much, I'm going to use Rose de Oro by Milani in their Baked Blush formula, because this will really help warm up the face, kind of how the backdrop of the painting is a little bit more warm, um, and also kind of emphasizing the glow that you see around the angel. And I'm gonna put a little bit of it on my nose because I've just been liking blush on my nose too. Now the last thing that I'm going to add is a bit of lipstick. I'm going to use Matte Beauty by Milani, not just because it's my favorite lipstick, but because I realize in this look I haven't emphasized the brown aspects of the painting as much, and I do want to put that in there so that it feels like a completely inspired look, not just by an inspired by the part that interests me the most type look. So I'm just gonna put that in here. Okay, and this is the finished look. All right, that is it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed my theological portion of the Art Inspired Shop My Stash on Elijah in the Wilderness by Frederick Layton. Please go check out Mia's video. I'm really excited to see what she comes up with. Um, I'm also really excited to see her perspective on the painting because I don't know that much about art but she does, and that's really great. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and subscribe down below if you want to see more videos from me, and I'll see you on my next one. Hope you'll have a wonderful day. Bye!